What's good, YouTube? And welcome to the house. We have a pretty big market watch for y'all today between YCS changes as well as things I'd be personally looking at now. The trends going around, buy these cards before they skyrocket. And I'm going to say, Cards I would get slowly over time. That being said, today's sponsor of the video is Dank Ritual. They have sent me multiple products to review in tomorrow's video, and there's no code what's good 5 for 5% off and to support the channel directly, but I will be showing off their products here, and I do suggest them in general, not just because they send me cool stuff and pay me, because I genuinely do like their product, and they're getting more out there. Now, their new playmats are more bang for your buck. Check it out. They are slightly bigger in size versus this. And uh, you can actually see if I pull here, it's got a good amount of size versus their older mats. Yet it's still not going to be annoyingly over your opponent's stuff it's not that crazy bigger it's 65 by 65 centimeters the gray has a bit of marbling that feels great but should not do anything while dragging your cards that impedes them and it's a simplistic design that really pops on the fabric even black on gray and then we have light blue on dark blue the site makes it look a bit white and i'll show that but I really like the colors on this playmat, even though I like the feel of the gray more. These are $60 over on their website, and they do also have a limited dragon mat, and this uses like a crazy different laser etching that gets the colors to pop. I'll be showing that in tomorrow's video as well. And if you are going and buying, I highly suggest trying a pack of their sleeves. I asked them to send them to me with every single package, and I'm like, yo, send me more sleeves for my past format deck because I really, really love, especially the turquoise one. I think it's a great color. I don't know if it captures on here though, so I'll show those again tomorrow as well when doing drag test on the mats and all that. Let's go ahead and get to the cards and YCS and all that. Well, yeah, we're still in snake eye format. I warned y'all that was gonna be happening, but when it comes down to it, there's still a lot of rogue trying to do its thing. Fire Princess is way up. That was an easy call versus Banless not going to hit the deck and stop Konami from selling future product stuff. And this card is right now going up at a pretty good rate, $28 lowest. The graph actually shows it even further beyond crazily because of some weird traction. This could be international buyers. It could be people trying to spike it, but I would think probably international because it's not like 100, 120 obvious fakes, but who knows with how the market works. We have also Labyrinth doing pretty good at the event. Destructive Daruma camera, Karma Cannon. Say that five times fast as a YouTuber. It is solidly still up towards $8 here for the Ultra Rare. And I believe the Secret Rare is actually exceeding that and is around nine low nines, but still doing better than the OG, which not every card actually achieves that when we have reprints. Runic Tip, for example, the Ultra, still ahead of the Secret, but the Secret has been going up for some time. I hadn't checked in on a while for this, and yeah, it is solidly above five towards six dollars as Runic Stun has been performing. Shoutouts to Johnny. Then we see Cash Tira Unicorn here, also steadily up. This is a small double up. We talk about a lot of cash buyouts, but I hadn't focused on this. The Ultra is up towards three, some odd, and the Secret is up towards two. And these aren't going to be the most readily replaceable as people do not want to open these mega tins. So as they continue to get bought out, uh, quantities aren't necessarily going to rush to replace themselves, right? Then you also have Forbidden Droplet doing somewhat decent in the format. To note, the quarter century secret rare continues to go up and is now towards 60 to $62, while other versions of it have been steadily creeping up as well. So be aware of that the other versions are starting to stonk a bit and on the low end it is starting to look like a solid five ish dollar card and trying to really claim that spot rarity collection one aging like fine wine nightmare throne both the quarter century secret rare as well as the ultra are going up despite not that much representation in top cut casual doesn't mean broken the deck is still really good and i think in perform 
especially at the regional and local scene, I think it is a very cool deck, and a lot of people agree with their wallets. $38 on the Ultra Rare and the Quarter Century Secret Rare, trying to take the throne of the set around 170 We have the Kaiba Court Briefcase. I hadn't peeked in on this for a while, and the solds on eBay even are around that thousand freaking dollar mark. So this was a home run. I personally held off because I had the OCG ones and the Secret rare was not extended art in fact they didn't really show it off until basically it got in people's hands so this is still a pretty nice looking card and i really do like the quarter century secret blue eyes white dragon i was hoping it would fall out because there's the tablet it's comparable but no it's an art that means a lot to me actually from the jump promos but here it is outperforming my thoughts i'm not always right i get a lot wrong at times and this is another one where i was like mm, there's the japanese one uh, the other collectibles not oh no this skyrocketed completely and people are eating pretty good on it that did order battle ox for lob format is notable which is probably why it's up so much uh one of the most requested cards from my ocg pool is the extended art old school box battle ox so it makes a lot of sense and so much for LARP being exclusive, though, as they did dip their toe into reprinting that in here as well. But when it comes down to it, there is a good amount of actual demand for the Kaiba cards. There's not the most resold on the market, and the sales on the briefcase themselves are very very impressive. Sakuretsu Armor. We're going to get into cards that I would personally be getting, not necessarily rushing towards on every single front, but if you're getting the Secret Rare, I would probably get that sooner than later, considering it goes up very, very fast, and the Midterm Destruction Box has a lot wrong with it in terms of distribution and how Konami handled it. However, something I'd be slowly picking up if you're not too interested and you want a bit of a piece of history, is First Edition Legendary Collection 3 Yugi's World has fallen out a lot thanks to the secret rare as it becomes more towards the lower end of mid to max rarity first ed yugi's world is extremely popular sees a ton of buyouts over time and it's just something i would be looking at as these have fallen towards a low of six dollars and now if you're hunting for more first editions you're paying a little more as people aren't rushing to list these or anything but i do like that first edition stamp on the yugi world supers now there's also the champion pack super so the secret is technically Technically highest rarity on the list even though the champion pick pack is the true pick for top rarity i i line things up in my head for these videos and sometimes they just come out out of order but we do it live Another card I'd be getting sooner than later is number 90. It's actually slowly fallen out, and I don't think Battles of Legend Chapter 1 will be opened all that much now, versus it being relevant and getting another reprint, because that reprint was so great, let's do it again, is something Konami likes to do. Who knows if it would actually pan out, but it's a card at this price I think is a pretty good pickup. And if you're going for max rarity number collecting, this is starting to even out a little, but I think could fall a little further. We'll wait and see. But the secret rare is trying to cling on to 25 here. And if this does start going back up, then the secret rare would probably follow. Chaos Emperor Dragon has a little spike here after meeting it's low just under five dollars now it's just around the five dollars it's something i'd probably get sooner than later just because prize card x prize cards that don't have many reprints and usually don't get another reprint for a long time there's something that have a history of going up and i do like this card again most of these are cards to take your time getting their cards i would pile up if i'm vending and not sell i would keep to see what happens and a lot of the times you can take l's with those dubs so do be aware waiting and holding gives opportunity cost as well as reprints sometimes so there's plenty of risk going in that's why i'm not a financial advisor i don't know the future of the card market where things are going to go and i take l's with my dubs minerva is another prize card however that is seeing current play with light sworn and largely overlooked is the silver letter rare here that is foil people aren't the most perceptive to enjoying these but being a dollar 50 versus every other version starting to you know trend on up 
kind of like that price point, although the Ultra is reminiscent of the prize card, isn't it? And then Secret would be highest rarity outside of prize cards, yet has actually fallen off and kind of hung in around five, so it's not a bad time to get your Secret Rare either. Every single version has something good going for it for Minerva right now, and Lightsworn does have a bit of hype behind it and a bit of overpricing here and there. I like specifically Ultimate Rare Zeus Sky Thunder, but I also do like the Secret Rares because they are barely above the Ultras, yet if we get buyouts on this card in the future with out another reprint i think the secrets will proportionally go up to around 1820 where the ultras will be the last ones to go up right from the two player starter set and the 2021 tens which people are praying get some kind of value so the secrets i kind of like a bit more in terms of lower mid max but i really like the ultimate rare because it's able to be in the conversation versus the 25th it looks pretty darn good and specifically eu foiling is what i would be after and it's had its waves of ups and downs and it's currently towards a low here and i do think it's a decent one that will find its way back into meta games in terms of 25ths i really like a lot of the promos here and if you've been into them you've seen the cyber dragon absolutely fall off from its buyout and you might not have looked back at this page however However, multiple of these are going up right now. Exodia is doing really well for itself all of a sudden, as is Black Rose Dragon, which makes a lot of sense because it finds its way in the modern decks. You also have Edison. You have so many things going for Black Rose Dragon. And Stardust 25th is kind of nice too. I really like almost every single card that here except for odd eyes because you do have the old plat secret that's going to compete with it for sparkliness but i really do think pretty much everything except these four have a great amount of potential in the future to be towards a 15 to 20 dollar card depending on future support and time but again there's going to be plenty of more nice dark magicians maybe even another 25th in this year's 10 so do also consider things like that number one collector rare a lot of people don't want to go for collector rares after seeing rarity collection but i don't think rarity collection is gonna do them all right like we're not gonna get a number rarity collection i would think but it's something konami could do however i do really like this card and collector rare it's really started to stabilize in price around 25 yet there's plenty around 22 it doesn't have the greatest sales rate or anything right now it's something i would have maybe like a binder page of to 12 and not go too super deep however max rarity number collecting we've seen a lot of those cards do very well over time and this card also has a very nice effect ancient chance one i brought up on the channel before it's slowly climbing already but versus that other ultra rare being 50 60 dollars for no reason other than it was in legendary duelist and people wanted to play it and new support came out i think this collector rare is very nice as the current max rarity and i really do think over time like people love building these decks and they see oh it's not that much right now and then oh 15 is not that bad 20 25 is not that bad 30 is where people will probably get mm, and it could settle around 28 for a while but i definitely see a future where ancient chant continues to go up but again the risks are that you know people aren't that into it and you can see you know versus the opening weeks people did try and it still came down a little bit i just really think this card has a decent future and if i was vending it's one i would be slowly building a pile of splash mage is an odd off pick that i just believe in the potential and these are the kind of stacks i sometimes got where i have a hundred of them and another hollow comes out and i never make any money and i only spent money however i do think splash mage will eventually find its way into some kind of meta deck for its typing and find a way it's in so many fan favorite decks but currently it's at one of its cheaper points in its history, which is why I would like to pick it up now around a dollar for the hollow. And it only has two printings, meaning if it did popularize and it didn't have a reprint uh, and it, this would still be over an OTS super, right? As an ultra, 
well, it could see a future where it is a bit expensive. We see Madolce Queen Tiramisu had a huge buyout and already fell back down all the way. Now we do have the new Tiramisu kind of effect that's quick play and all that. But at 50, it is interesting to me once again because it basically fell right back to under where it was. So be aware that this card is down and Madolce does have future support and usually that drums up interest but this isn't a super long-term hold in my mind it's more like ah there's support on the horizon and i've seen the curve fall off curve again way too many times in my career however the new support might have power crept a little let me know if you're a mandolce player how you feel about that one tunes have gotten a lot of attention with the tune kingdom buyouts lately the rare and now we see people going in on the maven secret pharaoh rare it's just kind of a lot of attention on tunes without any support or anything there i would be looking at tune page flip now the collector rare is the highest but the secret rare is super affordable at just two dollars and i like this version specifically because i believe they debuted as ultras in tune chaos if i recall and uh yeah you have bookmark and flip and ultra which weren't the most accessible per box however the collector rare for quote-unquote highest rarity and first edition tune chaos is very notable is under 25 dollars at this point and you also have tune bookmark they're continuing to make tunized support in terms of merch in the ocg and even a new tune line of figures that aren't specifically tunes but they're tune style so we do see stuff like tune jinzo and tune mystical elf in official merch though and when it comes down to it i do like these cards specifically especially the secret rares as penny stonks however if you're gambling harder there is the collector rare these are cards, though, that since they're Pegasus-related, could see Konami's attention and some special products in the future. And versus Secret Rares being highest rarity, a lot of reprints are likely to be under that rarity if you are going for the Penny Stonk approach. Again, these are things I personally would be going for if I still vended today and slowly building, not rushing out and buying, not to get these before they... Uh, it would be more like... Yeah, just slowly slide them on in. Don't, you know, go too hard on them. The chips could fall either way. Thanks for watching today's Market Watch. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy these more in-depth conversations and more looks at market theory and my vendor brain and also vendor brain versus, you know, market the brain versus player brain. And then also do check out Dank Ritual and their playmats review I will do tomorrow. And sorry if you hear a bunch of thunder in the background. It is storming outside today.